So with the way the railroads are hiring these days, a lot of class one carriers are offering massive sign-on bonuses. With that going on, a question I get asked a lot is, should I take the money? Well, let's cover some points on that and I'll give you my thoughts and hopefully that helps you make a decision. I'm John with Rails, Tales and Trails and if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button down below. It helps the YouTube algorithm get our videos out there. And I want to give a big shout out to our channel members that have been supporting us from day one. Thank you for everything that you guys do. Also, do me a favor, click the links below, join our Discord server. It's free. Come connect with everybody else. Have a good time. With the hiring bonuses, typically what you're going to see is something along the lines of five, ten, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars. Those do come with stipulations. Now the stipulations vary from carrier to carrier. Make sure you read the fine print. But typically, if you quit or get fired within a certain time frame, let's say three years, you have to pay all of that back. Now, one of the big things to consider on this is when you get paid this bonus, maybe it's in one lump sum, maybe it's in parts, whatever it is, it's going to be taxed. So if you quit or get fired, they're going to want their money back, even though you already paid the taxes on it. So not only are you going to be out the money that was left over after taxes, you're going to have to pay the taxable amount back too. Nice little caveat there for those guys. So the next part is these sign on bonuses typically come with some kind of location agreement. What that means is for taking the sign on bonus, you agree to be at this one particular location for X amount of time. Again, we will just use three years. This could vary. Read the fine print. The next question is, well, what if I get furloughed? Will I still be able to chase? If you have the ability to chase with your seniority, you should be able to do so. I personally, when I hired out, took the sign on bonus because I lived in that location where I was at. So happens that if I cannot hold, which did happen to me. I got furloughed. I needed to chase work. I couldn't hold my hometown terminal. I was allowed to go and chase. Now, if a turn or turns opened up to where I could hold there, I'm not talking like just a day or 24 hours. If I could hold there for a term, I was expected to come back to Amarillo. Did that ever happen to me? No. So with that said, and based off my experiences, you need to read the fine print and not just sign away real quick. Read the fine print, find out what the exact terms are, because that fine print may have some caveats in there that, well, just doesn't make it all that attractive. The next thing is I think it's very important to consider your future plans. If you are hiring out, in a town where your terminal is located and you have no intentions of moving, well, taking that sign-on bonus may be a positive thing, especially if you're considering making the railroad a long-term career. If this is something you're just filling out to see if it's something you like, taking that sign-on bonus may actually put you in a bind. You need to ask questions and get clarification on being furloughed or not able to hold your terminal. How much leeway do they give if you're off chasing work before they expect you to come home? Will you get a phone call? Are you expected to constantly keep an eye on the boards? Those kinds of things. Ask those questions and get very specific answers. If you don't get specific answers, I wouldn't take the hiring bonus. However, if you get specific answers and they're like, yeah, if you're off chasing work because you were furloughed or you couldn't hold, you're going to get a phone call telling you you have to come back. All right, cool. So that way, if you're off chasing work, you're already squared away and know that that's a potential that could happen. 
So guys, I know a lot of you are wanting a specific answer. Take the money. Don't take the money. Depending who you talk to, they'll tell you take the money. Don't take the money. But the fact of the matter is, is that everybody's situation is different. You need to keep that in mind before making a decision. Yes, it's going to get taxed. Whatever we get, they want a large piece of. This is the same. And if you are starting your career in the railroad, get used to having everything you get monetarily taxed to high heaven. It's, it's a very frustrating part of the job, but it is what it is. Also, listen to what other people have to say. Take it to heart and listen to it and take it into consideration, but don't solely base your decision off that. Again, everybody's situation is different. But something to keep in mind, even after it's taxed, it is still more money than you had before, which was zero. Now, I'm not saying you guys are broke. Just saying, if you get 5000 and they take let's say half of it for taxes. Well, that's still $2,500 in your pocket you didn't have before. Don't know about you, but $2,500 goes a really long ways with me and my family. So take everything into consideration and go from there. Now, guys, like I said, if you haven't done so already, hit that like and subscribe button down below. I would like to see y'all's comments and y'all's questions regarding this topic in the comments below till next time you guys have a good one see you on the flip side